Mods. Mods and FX. See, we're going to be covering mods and FX. We're going to be covering two subjects in one because if you look at the mods and you look at FX, they have all the same thing. So, it just means that you can have one more than one working at a time. You can have a chorus and a tremolo, a chorus and a vibrato, so on and so forth. I'm, how many times am I going to say so on and so forth in this whole thing? I think I'm going to stop right now. You're welcome. Anyway, mods. Let's cover mods. Let's. Uh, we're on a starter tone right here. I have everything else turned off. I have boosters turned off, delay turned off, and reverb turned off. I'm on a crunch channel, but we're going to go down to... We're going we're gonna to leave it on Crunch Channel, but let's hear our dry signal right now. It's a fairly clean signal. We've got it on Vintage Amp. Maybe, um, maybe we'll put it on Modern. Maybe we'll turn that presence down a bit. Should we turn some contour on? That sounds good. Let's start right from the top. Everybody knows what a chorus is, right? I mean, if you're playing guitar, you should know, but sometimes you don't. Well, chorus, uh, chorus is chorus. It makes it sound like there's more than one of you. And it kind of takes your high ends and low ends and beefs them up and makes them sound like this. i to turn it on first. Kind of flat, and now there's more of you. Multiplicity. Beefs up your sound a bit. Now you got low rate, low depth, low pre delay, low level, cross frequency, direct mix, high rate, high depth, high pre delay, and high level. Let's read straight from the chorus over here about what each one of these do. I'm going to pull this over here so you can see it. The low rate adjusts the speed of the chorus effect by low frequency range. So let's test it out. You can hear it in the background there if you listen closely. It's like, a... and back over here, low depth adjusts the depth of the chorus effect for the low frequency range. If you wish to use this as a doubling effect, use a setting of zero. Let's try that. Let's turn it all the way down. And let's turn this one all the way up. Honestly, I don't really hear much of a difference. I do there. Let's turn crank them all both up. Just sounds weird in the background there. Now that's almost normalized. And back up. Then you got low pre-delay, 0 to 40 milliseconds. Adjusts the delay of the effect sound in low frequency ranges. Extends the pre-delay while pro uh, extending the pre-delay will produce the sensation of multiple sounds. Doubling effect. It says uh, extending the pre-delay. Okay, let's... Uh Low level, frequency crossover, and direct mix. Well, that actually sounds pretty good right there. Let's turn the level down a bit. Let's go in the neck pickup. Next, we got high rate, high depth, and high pre delay. So, high rate adjusts the speed of the chorus effect for high frequency range. You hear it right there. It's a little more ringy. 
That's probably a good balance right there at 39. High depth. Adjust the depth of the chorus effect for high frequency range. Sounds like. So that sounds about as high as you want to go with that chorus. Trust me, these are going to get a lot faster luck in here in a second. And then you get high, pre-delay. Uh, and it says extending, extending the pre-delay will produce a sensation of multiple sounds. The same as low. So... sounds good and then high level is just high level next mod we got is the flanger flanger effect gives a twisting jet airplane like character to the sound hear it in there we adjust the rate up Just the depth to make it shallower or deeper. Resonance. Stop! It's a police. I know that was corny. Resonance about 50. Manual? What does manual do? Let's look up manual here. Because it goes through each of these effects too. So chorus, flanger, manual. Adjust the center frequency at which to apply the effect. And the low cut sets the frequency at which the low cut filter begins to take effect. When selected fat, or I'm sorry, flat, the low cut filter will have no effect. Flanger sounds good if you got it. Let's go up the lead. Sounds good with distortion. Let's turn it to brown. It's a, it's a, it's a stank on it. Next up after flanger, we have phaser. Gotta love a phaser. Plus you got you got a couple different phasers here too. You got a four stage, eight stage, twelve stage, and biphase. So you got the four stage. And the phaser by adding varied phase portion. By adding varied phase portions to the direct sound, the phaser effect gives a whooshing, swirling character to the sound. Let's go to the eighth stage. And twelfth stage. 
a little deeper. And then lastly, we got the biphase. Gives you two phase shift circuits connected in series. It's a little more unique. Almost has like a wah sound to it. After your phaser, you have the Univibe. Now, Univibe uh, resembles a phaser effect, but it also provides a unique undulation that you can't get with a regular phaser. Let's turn that right down a bit. Pretty simple. You got rate, depth, and level. Next up, you got tremolo. You know, everybody knows what a tremolo is, right? All right. Well, let's hear it. Wave shape. You can make it smaller, larger. Rate. Slow it down. Speed it up. Depth. Go deeper or shallower. Now, vibrato is different than tremolo. Tremolo kind of goes like this, where vibrato kind of goes like this. It flutters more than it dips. Next, we got rotary. Now, rotary, it produces the effect like the sound of a rotary speaker. Like a speaker spinning around. Slow it down. And you can change the depth of it. Too easy. Next thing you know, we got the ring mod. This sound could be unmusical and lack distinct pitches. You ready? Yep. Turn the effect level down, see if we can. Now you got different ring mods here. You got normal and you got intelligent. The normal this is a normal ring mod, and the intelligent one, by ring modulating the input signal, a bell-like sound is created. The intelligent ring modulator changes the oscillation feature according to the pitch of the input. Therefore, produces a sound with a sense of pitch, which is quite different from normal. Next up, we got slow gear. This produces a volume swell, kind of like a violin. You ready? And adjust the sensitivity of the slow gear, up or down. And the rise time, how long it takes to rise. Turn it down and make it slower. Or faster. Actually, that's just the opposite. Turn it up makes it slower. Turn it down makes it faster. So let's... Kind of sounds a little funky there if you're trying to play more than one note. And the next thing you know, you got the slicer... This consecutively interrupts the sound to create the impression that a rhythm backing phase phrase is being played. Mm -hmm. 
you got different patterns on this. Now you got pattern one through pattern twenty. See this one kind of fluctuates. You speed up the rate, slow it down. And then you got trigger sensitivity. Then you have compressor. Okay, you got different kind of compressors. You Let's go up to the top. You got a boss compressor. Models the boss CS3. <laughs> We're just going to go over it. I'm not going to sit here and try to demo each and every one of those compressors for you. I'm not going to go through and demo every one of these compressors, so I'll just read them off what they are. We already covered the Boss Comp. This is a high band comp. It's a compressor that adds even stronger effect in the high end. Then you got Light. is a compressor with a light effect. Decomp models an MXR Dynacomp. Orange models the sound of a Dan Armstrong orange squeezer. Then you got Fat. When applied heavily, this compressor effect provides a fat tone with a boosted mid-range. Mid the mild, when applied heavily, this compressor effect produces a sweet tone with the high-end cut. I don't think I explained what a compressor does. The compressor is an effect that produces a long sustain by evening out the volume levels of the input signal. Now, that's directly from the user's manual. You can also use it as a limiter to suppress only the sound peaks and prevent distortion. It's uh, having a compressor in your mix is a great way to kind of even things out and to control your volumes and your sustain. All right, next up we have the limiter, which a limiter is similar to a compressor. It, uh, attenuates loud input levels to prevent distortion. So if you're trying to... Let's put it on clean. Okay, normally clean without the limiter. You see how I toned it down some? Now that's the boss limiter. You got other limiters here. You got a RAG 160D. This uh, models a DBX160X. And you got the VTG Rack U. Models a UREI1178. After that, you got TWA. Produces a wah effect with the filter changing in response to the guitar level. So, TWA. <laughs> Now you get different modes here. Uh, BFP, band pass filter, provides a wah effect in a narrow frequency. And an LPF, low pass filter, provides a wah over a wide frequency range. Up, the frequency of the filter will rise. And down, it will fall. I like the BPF myself, and I like up. Now, of course, your sensitivity and frequency. And your peak. You can crank your peak up. It adjusts the way in which the watt effects applies to the area around the center frequency. Next, we have the auto wah. Now, the auto wah changes filtering over periodic cycle, providing an automatic wah effect. <laughs> See, it doesn't matter on the uh, the difference between the T-Wah and the Ottawa. T-Wah is touch-wah, okay? So as soon as you strike a string, that's how it applies. Now, Ottawa, you're just setting up a, a, a rate and depth sort of like a phaser or a flanger. And you can change notes between wah wah wahs okay? Next thing you got is your pedal wah. 
Now, Pedal Wah is controlled with your pedal effects, okay, an expression pedal that you can either plug into your GAFC, which we'll cover later, or plug it straight into the back of the amp if you have a 100 or higher. Now, you got different wahs here. You got a cry wah, which is a typical cry baby, a uh, vox wah, a fat wah, a light, a seven string wah, and a resonant wah, a rezo. So you got several different wans to choose from. You can cry any which way you like. Next thing you know, you got a graphic equalizer. You can play with that sometime. Or a parametric EQ. So with this, now listen, it gets a little crazy here. Because in a mod, or in a, in a mod you can have a parametric EQ. Then effects, you could have a graphic EQ. And then you got two more EQs here. And then you could put the, t the global EQ. So you could have one, two, three four five eqs running at once which is just nuts then you got guitar sim what this is this is interesting okay because right now i'm running through a single coil now this is single to humbucker all right so it's on single to humbucker and then you adjust the highs and lows of them and now you got humbucker to single. Thins it out some. Then you got single hollow body. Adds a little body to it and you can make the body bigger or smaller. And the same thing with the humbucker. And then you got single acoustic. Gives you an acoustic simulator, like a single coil guitar to an acoustic. Humbucker. And lastly, piezo. After guitar sim, you got acoustic guitar simulator, which it's basically like a, a Boss AC3. AC2, something like that. And then acoustic processor. What you got? Medium, small. And then you got all your adjustments in here. I'm not going to go over each and every one of them. And then power. Which none of them sound like they're really doing a whole lot. Until you do that. Next up, you have Wave Synth. Now, Wave Synth is a synth sound that pr processes the guitar input signal. So, we're turning your guitar into a synth. Turn up the synth level, resonance, and cut off. This is the saw, and this is the square. saw is like a jagged, okay, and the square is more like a, 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 a square. it's that good of a synth uh, modulator but whatever octave okay everybody knows what an octave is it adds a note one octave lower and creates a richer sound you got several different ranges here And then you got heavy octave. 
This adds a heavier octave. This adds sound lowered by an octave to the original sound since you can play chords even when using this effect, you can still use it to fatten the sound of your chords playing as well. I don't think I really play much chords with that one. A pitch shifter, good old pitch shifter. Nothing to make your guitar sound out of tune than a pitch shifter. It changes the pitch of the original sound up or down within a range of two octaves. Makes your guitar sound all jazzy. You got two voices here. Why can't they just play the right notes? Next, you got harmonist. You know what harmonist does? It harmonizes. So a harmonist is an effect where the amount of shifting is adjusted accordingly to analysis of the guitar input, allowing you to create harmony based on the diatonic scale. Unfortunately, I didn't take a whole lot of music courses in high school or college, and uh, I don't know what any of that means. But basically, it makes your guitar sound funny. Like it's trying to harmonize it by changing octaves. So that's a harmonist. You got two voices. I'm not going to cover too much of that. You got humanizer. This says it creates a human like vowel sounds. <laughs> Okay, you got A E I O U, but never Y. I don't make the rules. You got two vowels. You can make two vowels. Like, like, let's make I O I O A O A O I O I O. Right. Let's turn the rate down, and let's picking. It only does in a picking. And auto. Let's go back down to auto. Hmm. That's a phone to screw around with. I don't know where I would fit it in my mix, though. Next thing you got Phaser 90E. This is the Eddie Van Halen MXR EBH 90 phase shifter. This one simplifies the phaser quite a bit more than the other phaser. See, you got script on, script off, and speed. So, script on. <laughs> It switches the character of the phaser. On or off. Off is modern, on is vintage. Let's go off. And after that, when you got the Flanger 117E, also Eddie Van Halen. EVH 117 by MXR. Manual with speed and regeneration. I 
I like that flanger better than the other one. After that, you got the Wah 95E, and of course, you got to control this with your pedal effects. We'll get into that later. And you got the good old DC 30. Now, this is a, uh, it models a Roland DC 30, which is a chorus and echo effect. I actually like this better than the conventional chorus. And then echo. I just made up a chord. It doesn't make any sense. I don't even know what I did. It was like, it doesn't matter. It's got a nice echo effect on that DC-30. And lastly, pedal bend. And of course, you have to use pedal effects on that. And we will cover that when we get there. So that covers mods and effects. Is like I said, both of them are the same. And you can have more than one on at a time. Next up, we will cover delays which will be covered in delay one and two because guess what they're the same too you just can have more than one delay that's all <laughs> 